Okay, here's the board, the Ouija board that was sent to us by Paranormal Truth. And it says, thank you for supporting us on our journey to promote legitimate paranormal research. It's by Dale Macon, signed, and by Justin Cowell, signed. Hello everyone, I am Timothy and you're here with Alexandria and we are World Paranormal Research Society. Hello everybody. And today we're going to talk about Ouija boards and the dangers of Ouija boards. Actually, we received a Ouija board from a buddy of ours in the UK and uh, he's, and, you know, my son came up to visit us and when he came to visit us, uh, he was wanting to use the Ouija board. So, yeah, we, we used the Ouija board, and after we did that, uh, we basically, we didn't just open up what they would call a can of worms, we opened up a can of ghosts, barrel of ghosts, spirits, and all kinds of stuff, man. And so, it's, it, in, in the 10 years that I've been doing this, paranormal research, and as a scientist, I can tell you without a doubt that Ouija is dangerous. And for those out there, the Ouija board is also known as a spirit board or a talking board. And uh, spiritualists believe that the dead were able to contact the living and reportedly used a talking board very similar to the modern Ouija board uh, back in 1886. And again, well, no, uh, it predates that. It goes, exactly, it goes all the way back. To, the, the Ouija board itself became known popular in the late 1800s it became popular and mass produced however uh the planchette is that what it's called planchette? Yes. the planchette was uh used way back in, in early chinese dynasties and stuff so this is something that's been used uh for thousands and thousands of years and you got to realize that uh it is a powerful tool and what makes it different than uh, EVP recording or capturing device well what makes it different is this when you use a Ouija board you have to actually put your hands on something that the spirit will have will be moving when you're using a device to catch an EVP the spirit is speaking through the white noise that's generated or some other kind of generated uh, noise that it's going to gravitate to and, and speak through and it doesn't not necessarily have any have to have any physical contact with you of course unless you're holding it and even then you really it really doesn't have to have physical contact with the person holding the, the device whereas when you're using a Ouija board uh, the two people that are the one person that's holding it or how many other people that's actually touching that, uh, that planchette uh, that device will uh, the spirit will indeed have to touch something that you are actually touching in order to move it and there's some trains of thought out there that some christian denominations have war warned against using uh ouija boards saying that they can lead to demonic possession occultists on the other hand uh, are divided on the issue with some saying that it can be a tool for positive transformation and others reiterate the warning of many christians and caution inexperienced users against it and Timothy did make mention of China and one of the first mentions of automatic writing method used in the Ouija board is found in China around 1100 AD in historical uh, documents of the Song Dynasty okay so uh, here's the thing we have a professional paranormal researcher uh, that's done many locations in the UK his name is Ian Vero, and we're about to give him a call right now. We're going to place a call to the UK, so let's go ahead and do that. Hello? Oh. Hey, Ian, how you doing, man? I'm all right, mate. You? Yeah, we're doing good. This is Timothy and Alexandria, World Paranormal Research Society. Hi, Ian. Hello. <laughs> and I know you know who it is. We just kind of say it for, the, uh, for show purposes here, but... Uh, you know, man, and, and what we kind of want to talk about for today's show is because uh, there's some parano there's some people out there, some hobbyists out there that believe that there's nothing wrong with using Ouija. They think it's completely safe. And as a professional 
paranormal researcher, uh, and I've been doing this for 10 years, uh, you start to notice that uh, Ouija is very real and it can be very dangerous. And uh, we know that you've had extensive uh, uh, use with the board that was sent to us. And uh, we would like to discuss that. But before, before you do, since we have people listening to all over the world and primarily in the USA and Canada, I would like for us to discuss a little bit of the, how COVID is affecting y'all out in the UK. Yeah, I mean, over here, we've, we're pretty much in lockdown. Uh, it's only essential travel. Um, like if you've got to go to work or if um, you need shopping or whatever, that is the only reasonable excuses for going out of your house at the moment. So um, that's how bad it is here. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, you, I know you were telling me when we were talking yesterday that uh, y'all not really able to do uh, any paranormal investigations right now because your team, uh, usually you have about six people and that's not including the people that's in the residence. Is that correct? Uh, there's usually three of us uh, actually investigating. Uh, we do have other team members in the background which don't go on the cases. But um, yeah, pretty much we can't go anywhere. You can't go into people's houses as such. So we've um, our quiet time starts in November to maybe February. So we've had from last november so it's been over a year that we've not been out to investigate man that's got to be uh really bad because i know there's a lot of people in the uk that could probably use your uh services out there yeah yeah we're just advising on the phone at the moment because that's basically all we can do so yeah well man uh yeah it's hitting it it's hitting everybody hard with all these lockdowns and stuff like that and restrictions on travel and things of that nature but uh yeah, it's good to get some information from someone actually living in the UK that's experiencing uh, pretty similar situations there. I think they're a lot more lenient in the US and Canada as far as uh, the lockdown situations. But, uh, you, you know, some places you can go eat and some places you can't. Uh, is your restaurants open there at all? No, they're only doing takeaways. Uh, they will do deliveries to your house and you can go and collect, um, you know, obviously at a safe distance. But, uh, yeah, there's no restaurants actually open you can go into. Oh, you know, yeah. Cinemas and things like that are completely shut. Man, what are y'all doing out there for entertainment, man? Well, we watch a lot of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, ex I expect there'd be quite a few, uh, another generation of kids born, you know, sort of after lockdown, I expect. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there would be. You have a lot of kids coming up here. But what I want to get into with you, Ian, is, uh, you know, what is your overall thoughts on the Ouija board? And um, do you think that it's a dangerous tool to use if you don't know what you're doing, if you're just trying to play a game with it what do, what do you think personally it's like with most communication equipment if it, the intent is wrong then you can ask for problems um you know pl the usual format of oh it's a game and then someone goes and buys it yeah we play this as a game and something happens and they put it away they don't close it down it gets put in the cupboard and forgotten about and that's usually We've had, a, you know, in, in some of our cases, that has been the cause because people, you know, automatically think, oh, it's a game, you know, and then something happens, they put it away without properly dealing with it, and then it's basically left the doorway open, hasn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, if your intent is good and proper, you're not going to have an issue with it. Yeah, I know a lot of the uh, a lot of the the, the real life exorcisms that they've made uh, television documentaries out of television films out of. Uh, I know a lot of those uh, cases that's been famously uh, the exorcism cases. It, it always seems to have a Ouija board involved, and uh, <laughs> you know that's and, and I mean because if you go all the way back to the true story of the exorcist. Uh, there was definitely the use in with the family with a Ouija board prior to that exorcism. And it wasn't a little girl. It was a little boy. Uh, the movie had Linda Blair, of course. But we know that the actual real person was a, a little boy. Yeah. Yeah. 
so uh what we want to talk about is uh because y'all sent us a board uh from a documentary that y'all did and we're going to put a link to the documentary in the video below i mean in the description below the video and uh i i i happen how this show happened to come about is because i mean we've used plenty of ouija boards in the past and i can tell you that uh that once my son wanted to, to do to use the ouija uh after we did that with that board uh we've had a lot of activity um and so and and i was just wondering if you could give us a little bit of history on that board and uh some of it because i know one of the places you said that it was at with you was what one of the places is tied to alistair crowley but could you uh give us a little bit of history on it yeah i mean the board was uh, taken to nine of the most uh haunted locations in the uk i was only at one but um the list of uh, locations was uh said bolt of church in skibrook lincolnshire uh, the ancient ram inn in gloucestershire 30 degray street um Hoover stand cannock chase uh Wombwell woods ref colby uh four crosses pub and deering woods which is where i was in uh, Plutney kent which is in the guinness book of records as the most haunted village in the uk so oh wow uh, that is the one that's actually connected with crowley because apparently he visited there many times but there's not many places in the uk he didn't visit but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah y'all yeah, y'all gave us one hell of a gift there man <laughs> yeah but no, we, we, the, we, the, we, the, the funny thing is uh, throughout the whole documentary if anyone watches the documentary they'll see that not a lot really happened with the boards but <laughs> seems like you've got the brunt of it <laughs> yeah yeah we did we definitely got the brunt of it for sure we got so much stuff that we've captured and on film since we've used that board that we still got to put up on the uh we're gonna just throw it up on youtube for people to see but uh we've caught so much things uh by using that board in in in, in our mobile command unit you know because when we travel the country uh canada and the u.s doing paranormal investigations we we actually use an rv to do that and uh yeah and we've always been safe as far as cleansing our environment cleansing ourselves and uh using protection but uh this board seems to have a, a little bit of extra uh energy to it so to speak <laughs> yeah well it doesn't surprise me in the locations it's been to yeah so go ahead Alan. i mean some of them uh like uh the four crosses pub and can it chase are known for black eyed children wow shadow uh, people yeah and black eyed children yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, at Cannock Chase, uh, they suspect that the uh, the Black Eyed Children are the murder victims of a 1960 serial killer called Raymond Leslie Barris, which, you know, is fairly quite possible. Yeah. But you, you know what? The thing that fascinates uh, me, Ian, is, uh, you know, me being a historian and stuff. It's just through uh, the public and the masses has been so fascinated by the mysterious Ouija board. Uh, even uh, the famous painter Norman Rockwell, he did a painting in 1920 of a couple using a Ouija board. And Timothy had mentioned various films uh, use the Ouija board. And a lot of people may or may not know, maybe you know yourself, that the British singer Morrissey, he released a, a controversial title, a single titled Ouija Board, Ouija Board in 1989 and the lyrics and the video of the song were mockingly play with the idea of supernatural contacting dead uh, persons. So a lot of people uh, are fascinated with, with the idea of uh, the Ouija Board. Timothy had again uh, mentioned uh, The Exorcist. So many films, uh, you know, the Ouija Boards really have... Uh, have a place in uh horror tales uh you know where they're trying to uh spook uh you know enabling they're saying that it's a ouija board or spirit board is enabling malevolent uh, spirits to spook their their users so people are sort of taken aback they're horrified but yet they're fascinated at the very same time 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I've had uh, bad experiences with a Ouija board, especially as a kid, um, which is probably why I avoided them for many years. But if you know, it's, as I said, it's it's intent. If if anything, if uh, a knife is a dangerous thing if used wrongly, so uh, you know the Ouija board's no different. Yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because the whole the whole conversation came up in a I'm in a, a paranormal group that's on social media, and uh, there was this couple that wanted to uh, get drunk and use the Ouija board, and I was advising them against that. And uh, some yeah, guy, yeah, so yeah, that's not good at all. And <laughs> some guy commented, "Well, there's nothing wrong with the Ouija board, you know." And uh, and you know, I hate when people that don't have the research that we have and the knowledge that we have on this type of stuff try to give false advice like that to people out there because uh, it's nothing to get drunk and play with for sure um, no no you need to have a clear mind that's for sure yeah yeah you're definitely opening yourself up to the possibility of many bad things happening uh, and, and again like you said it's intent I understand but um, even even if even with good intent, uh, you could definitely uh, mistakenly have something bad happen to you. But one of the things that I was trying to communicate with the audience is that the difference between an EVP device and a Ouija board. Well, a Ouija board is hands-on with a, a record. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that so you're going to be touching something that the spirit or entity has to move, right? So that that's okay. Yeah. So that's a lot different than an EVP device. So, yeah, I mean, even though you oh, have... Yeah, I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, EV, EVP is you recording a voice and uh, basically a Ouija board or anything similar, like uh, crystals, exactly. It, they're using you as a conduit. So that's the vast difference between the two. Yeah, yeah, because they're not using you as a conduit. Uh, when you're recording that voice for an EVP, there uh, and again, they are when you're using the, the board, and that's what opens you up to, you know, even possession, uh, bringing in uh, uh, negative energy into yourself and things of that nature. So, uh, yeah. And you know, you had mentioned that one of the lo locations uh, was one uh, that Alistair Crawley uh, frequent, and it's just interesting that, of course. Alistair Crawley had a great admiration for the use of the Ouija board and in one of uh, his uh, unpublished letters to one of his students and uh, he said and this is what uh, uh, Crowley told uh, Jones one of his students and I quote your Ouija board experiment is rather fun you see how very satisfactory it is but I believe things improve greatly with patience I think you should keep one angel and make the magical preparations more elaborate so again um, Alistair Crowley was a huge fan of uh, using uh, the Ouija board in uh, magical works Oh yeah, I mean, uh, he was basically a great fan of most things uh, paranormal. So exactly, I mean, he would, uh, yeah, that's mainly how he ended up going dark side in the end. But uh, it, it can be, you know, if you if you treat it like a game, it can be addictive, and that's probably one of the biggest issues. Well, let let me ask you this question because I know that you mentioned that one of the places that it was at uh, was tied to Crowley. Can you go into a little bit of history on that? And again, for people that's wondering, they they'll be able to click the link to the documentary and watch the documentary uh, in the description below. But can you go a little bit about what happened at that location and uh, tell your experience? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were in Deering Woods, which is uh, nicknamed the Screaming Woods because they always hear screaming coming from the place but that's um it's in the most haunted village in the uk uh which in 1989 it was entered in the guinness book of records as such uh, there are recordings of white ladies uh high women uh, the headmaster of a local school hung himself and was found by the children uh they've there's a horse and coach which is seen going up the main street uh the black horse pub is quite active. Um, I went in there a few weeks after we did the documentary for lunch, and uh, one of the barmaids showed me a video of on their in 
interior CCTV, she was cleaning up the tables and they had an Easter display in the background and an Easter chick, which must have been about six foot high, uh, six inches high, it slid across the table and then jumped off the on its on its own completely without anyone anywhere near it. So um, they actually hear crying babies there. Uh, the population is under thirteen hundred people, but they but they've worked out there's one ghost for every eighty nine people in the village. Wow, that's incredible. That is awesome. We we definitely got to come there. I want to do an investigation with you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. And you know what? Another thing that I I find uh, uh, personally fascinating, uh, you know, we write books, and it's just interesting that they do say that uh, Ouija boards, for many people, have been a source of uh, inspiration for their literary, you know, their literary works, and they're saying they're used as guidance in writing or a form of channeling. And uh, Emily Grant Hutchins claimed that her novel Jap Huron, a novel written from the Ouija board in 1917 was dictated to her by Mark Twain's spirit uh, through the use of a Ouija board after his death and even uh, much of uh, William Butler Yeats, uh, Yeats uh, later poetry was inspired uh, among other facets of the occultism by the Ouija board. He didn't use the board himself, his his wife used the board. So a lot of these people uh, that have written literary works are claiming that they've used the Ouija board for inspiration. And uh, I find that sort of another fascinating uh, angle of where people have uh, said that they've channeled uh, deceased people and were able to to write these uh, literary works yeah I mean if you know if the intent's good and you get a good spirit come through then you know good things can happen from the Ouija board it's not all uh, gloom and doom as some people like to think but there is always that possibility but Ian, yourself and your team, uh, prior to using uh, the Ouija board, uh, spirit board, how do you like prepare before you go hands-on and touch the board? And then what do you do as a, a, a preparation after you're leaving the board? Because some, like I said, we all know even when my kids were small, you go into a toy store and they sell it in toy stores. So, you know, people, you have parents buying them as gifts for children. And uh, that's where the fear is that they're treating it as a game. So as a professional in the paranormal team, what do you do to keep yourself safe? Uh, well, generally, we don't we don't use them in private cases. We don't take them to people's houses. It's usually when we're at public locations, uh, we might, you know, bring one out. If generally, it's, if it's there, I mean, that's the only time we'll, we we will practically use them. Uh, and generally, it's just you know protecting yourself I mean most of the time we won't protect ourselves at the beginning because that can limit what comes through um, but you should always you know protect yourself uh, you know spirit in your head you know uh, white light yourself or whatever you know your choice of protection um, and afterwards make sure you close it down properly you know make sure you take it to goodbye um, give your intent that you are now breaking communication and you know protect yourself afterwards and cleanse yourself now let me ask you this question uh, do, do you have one personally that you keep at your home I have one but it's a it's a residential haunting one it was designed with like the team logo and everything on it um, and it's just there for decoration I don't actually use it yeah, and uh, you're and again, Ian's with residential hauntings, and uh, just to give some people some background on you, can you say uh, how long you've been doing paranormal research? Uh, I've been in the field over twenty years. Um, basically, research. I, I started off researching, and then I was out investigating myself, and eventually put the team together in about two thousand and nine, I think. Um, and you know we've had a few member changes but now we're now 
and uh, we we do primarily private cases, which is dealing with people's um, private houses uh, experiencing suspected activity, and we go in and uh, investigate and see if we can resolve the situation. And yeah. so I've lived with the paranormal basically since age five, so that's what got my interest. Now you said as a child you had a bad experience with a Ouija board as a child. Uh, could you describe yeah, it? Well, uh, yeah, I grew up in a haunted house. I uh, moved in at age five, um, and activity basically started from that point onwards, full full apparitions and everything. And as a teenager, talking to friends at school, we uh, decided, oh, let's try and find out what's in the house. And uh, we did a mocked up Ouija board. It was writing on a bit of paper <laughs> with a plastic cup. And uh, we said, right, let's try and communicate anyway. Um, we were asking questions and nothing was really happening. And it got to the point where the three of us started laughing and joking. And one of us said, um, you know, if there's somebody here, prove, uh, prove to us you're here and do something that, 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 such, that will shock us. And basically the cup, the cup threw across the, the room and my wardrobe door fell off and snapped across my mate's head. Wow. At which we, uh, we legged it out of the room. At a rate of knots, and <laughs> I hadn't touched one for years after that, till I was in at least my thirties. Wow! So yeah, that's pretty. That's a sort of a, a very dramatic experience to have at such a young age. Yeah. 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 Well, considering the stuff that used to go on in the house, I mean, it was a bit, it did frighten me a bit. But uh, you know, I, I was getting fairly used to what was going on by then, so. Uh, it scared the hell out of my friends, that's for sure. I mean, I spoke to because I'm actually writing a book now about my paranormal journey, should I say. And um, I actually contacted them. I haven't spoke to one of them for the best part of 25 years, but they both remember exactly what happened. Exactly oh, that is same. awesome. That is definitely <laughs> awesome. Hey, let me ask you this question. Uh, you, uh, you, you, I know that you're saying that things are uh, locked down over there and stuff of that nature and you you're doing a uh, telephone you're helping people by the telephone do you have a contact information for the people that may be listening in the uk if they want to contact residential haunting uh how would they contact you yeah we're on that our website is uh, www.residentialhaunting.co.uk uh, there's a contact form on the web page um, and they can also get us on Twitter at Team Res Horn. Um, they can contact us by either one of those methods and we will get back to them. Okay, awesome. And the point that I'm trying to get through to the audience today, because again, you, you've been doing this over 20 years. Alexandria is close to doing it about 30 years. I've been doing it 10 years and I can tell you that we do this professionally, not, not as a hobbyist. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with people doing it as a hobbyist. That's great. But we, we do this on a different level. And, and I do not recommend playing with a Ouija board. It, it can be dangerous. But then again, you can get great inspiration from it, as Alexandria was saying. And you're in the UK and, and you're pretty much saying the same thing as a professional paranormal researcher. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with everything, you know, it's, it's intent. Uh, that that would be the bottom line as far as I'm concerned. If your intent is to be a positive intent towards it and act responsibly and sensibly, then you shouldn't have a problem. Yeah, but, but even then, there is a possibility. Exactly. And my personal uh, opinion is that when my kids again were smaller and we'd go into major uh, brand toy stores and I seen the Ouija board there, I personally, this is my opinion, do not agree that they should be uh, sold in toy stores. Uh, you know, I, I personally don't agree with that because uh, just like any uh, equipment or any tool that you're using, 
if you don't get proper instruction, uh, things can go very, very wrong. And I, I don't think giving that as a gift for a young child that has no understanding, I, I, I personally don't agree with it. And I agree with what you're saying. Anything can be used dangerously or wrong if the intent is wrong. And I mean, uh, I, I use extreme caution as a child too. We dabbled with the Ouija board and we had a very horrific experience but uh, because we did you know it was like a parlor game you get it at any you know everybody wanted it for Christmas at that age and I, I really think it wasn't marketed properly when it was geared towards children I'm not saying they shouldn't sell it but it shouldn't be geared in a children's toy store that's just my personal opinion no no I mean over here there was a shop that was stocking it for kids and uh, I know the paranormal, paranormal community over here gave them a lot of grief about it and they actually took it off the shelf, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you have somebody like Hasbro, uh, Hasbro uh, marketing as, you know, t towards children, uh, I think that's very irresponsible as a company when you're putting, uh, uh, you know, dollar, the m money over, or, over children. And, you know, like Timothy and I, we've been in the field for a lot of years and, you know, we try and educate people on using things like you said responsibly and with the proper intent and Hollywood is has done a lot of damage too where people have been uh, uh, they're just kind of spellbound by the idea of Ouija boards and uh, you know they haven't done good marketing in that respect but I had another question and we're talking about the lock lockdown conditions in the UK do you feel as a paranormal uh, researcher that uh, people that are in, you know, more severe, restricted lockdown um, uh, requirements. Do you think paranormal activity has gone through the roof when the people that are contacting you, do they think that paranormal activity with, because there's a lot of pain, suffering, people have lost their jobs, they're ill. Uh, do you think that sort of gives into the atmosphere that uh, more negative energy would feed on what's going on in the world? Yeah, I mean, I've been talking to a few other members of the paranormal community over here, and it, as a whole, it seems to be activities going up. Uh, we, you know, even as investigators, we're having activity in our homes, um, and it seems to be this, you know, build up of energy, uh, anxiety. There's a lot more mental health issues coming out, which feeds negativity. Um, so yeah, I think. When we come out of lockdown, lockdown, we're going to be very busy, I think. Yeah, 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 we're going to be very busy, that's for sure. And we're, we're able to do investigations in Canada and in the U.S. Um, of course, uh, not not the to the extent we want to, but we're, we've been able to still do that. Um, and and uh, I know that you said that y'all locked down where y'all can't do that over there, but you're, at least y'all doing it by the phone. Uh, helping people out which is great and do you find that there's a lot of illness over there right now because of the COVID has it went up or has it went down uh, well you're talking to me who's in Hastings this this town's got a very heavy feeling about it anyway <laughs> but uh, you know probably Crowley doesn't help with that but um, yeah I think it's, it's dark times at the moment there's a lot of confusion a lot of anxiety and I think you know, basically, that is going to up the ante, isn't it? We're, we're going to have more paranormal activity and problems. And the bad thing about that is it's usually the negative ones that pick up on stuff like that. So, Yeah. But, I mean, with, with the uh, with the COVID specifically in the UK, how are you, how's y'all doing over there in the UK? Do y'all have a vaccine? Are y'all getting the vaccine or are y'all do y'all have a lot of cases over there? How's, how's things over there? Uh, our cases seem to be going down. Um, so is the death rate. It's going down gradually. Uh, we are getting vaccinated. I mean, they've been doing the, the older people first. Uh, luckily, my wife and myself, we both work in. So slowly, uh, people are getting vaccinated. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, once everybody's done, uh, it, it will curb it a hell of a lot. But um, yeah. Uh, fingers crossed <laughs> yeah well 
you know, we do appreciate you joining the show and telling people specifically about your feelings on the Ouija board. And, uh, you know, and I, I can't convince people enough that it's nothing to play with. And you got people out there who's claiming uh, to be go so-called ghost hunters. And they're telling people, oh, this is okay. There's a, there's a difference between being a hobbyist ghost hunter and being a paranormal researcher. It, it, there's actually a difference there. And so... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a big difference because at the end of the day, ghost hunters just want evidence. Um, you know, and that's basically all they're out for. Um, and paranormal investigators and researchers, we're trying to get answers and resolves. You know, it's, it's not just a case of... Oh yes, uh, we've investigated. You've got a ghost in your house. <laughs> what a ghost hunter would do. Uh, you know, you need to find out who it is, why they're there, and then maybe resolve the problem. Um, and then everybody's happy. I mean, if you go into a house and find out that the ghost there has got no bad intent, usually the clients are quite happy for it to stay there. So, you know, it's um, it's all education um, as much as anything else, really. I, you know, I, I agree with you, and uh, just like uh, the Ouija board, spirit board, talking board, you have to have the, the proper intent, and I think being a paranormal researcher, you have to have the proper intent. You have to want to seek answers and genuinely help people i mean i know in us being in the in the business we find i don't know if you found this that a lot of people that are doing paranormal research do not want to share knowledge uh they, they i think you know if we're working to the same goal to seek answers of the unknown i mean wouldn't it be beneficial to work together instead of bashing other paranormal teams or what have you and I mean working as a united force to seek the answers I mean we all know that there's people that are just in it for the money uh, you know they're charging people all these huge amounts and the problems never truly get uh, resolved but my opinion is I think that if people work together wouldn't uh, the knowledge be best be shared what, what's the benefit to hoard uh, scientific research or knowledge yeah I mean at the end of the day in the UK we have there's I mean I'm uh, connected to a lot of UK teams and people in the, in the paranormal field and we do share information uh, we you know try and help each other out we're always on the end of the phone if you need advice about certain things and it does happen in pockets over here but I know what you're saying as a whole there are teams who you know, sort of keep everything close. They want the fame for what they've discovered. And, and at the end of the day, there there are no proven ways to deal with anything. We have, all have to work on each other's experience. And whereas, you know, every case is different, we might have a result for one case that certainly won't work with another, even though the cases were very similar. So I think the sharing of experience, um, and your knowledge in certain specific things. I mean, there's a lot of things I, I don't know much about demonology, but when I come across that sort of thing, there are people I can contact who will quite gratefully give me the information they have. And uh, that does work to a good extent over here. And I think that's one of the reasons MJ started the Sage Paracon. She wanted to unite uh, teams together to work together and make us more accessible to the general public. Because a lot of the time, people don't know who to get hold of. They don't know, you know, it's still got this taboo about it that, you know, oh, I've got a ghost in my house. I don't want to talk about it. But uh, we're trying to like, OK, it's not such a taboo subject these days. We're here. If you want to talk about it, come and see us or give us a ring. You know, it's, you yeah. know, the, the way to go. In, inform, sharing information is the best way forward. And the problem we have got to deal with as well is that science, I don't think, is advanced enough for us to get proven answers. And until that actually happens, the only way we can advance in the field is to share, you know, share our experiences and knowledge that we've, we've all got. Yeah, and uh, that's one reason why we put uh, a lot of the stuff that we found ourselves on the internet for pre for free so people can look at it uh you know one video that we just put out recently was kind of a re-upload where you see a shadow figure 
moving it uh, near the mirror or it could be inside the mirror we couldn't really determine you see the actual apparition of a, a little girl ghost a real apparition of a little girl ghost yeah. and, and then you see two two faces in the mirror that are screaming and we put that stuff out to help educate because that's the difference with research with research you want to yeah. share that that information so like 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 you and alexandria were saying we could build upon what we learn ghost hunters are just about the fame you know we we've had three different networks contact us uh trying to get us to do uh because uh, we were in the area that they were in and they wanted us to do it a series and we refused to do it uh for a couple of reasons but yeah yeah cause... yeah it's very understandable i mean uh, I, I will very i mean i'm quite happy doing radio shows because that gets information out there I'm, you know i was happy to be involved in a documentary i've been asked to do another one but these you know it, it's all education you know my team have never made a penny out of our investigations um, and we don't intend to we don't we don't expect the public to fund their hobby either so uh, at the end of the day you know it's we're not in it for the fame or the money game we're in it to help people and as long as we can keep doing that and sharing information and educating people that's all we'll ever do I, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up here. I, it's off the Ouija board topic, and it's more onto the orbs. Because a lot of people are, are filming things that they think is orbs when it could be water particles. Uh, and, yeah. we, and we know natural light has a color spectrum in it, and if you're catching water particles, it's going to come off. People are telling me the different colors that they're seeing in orbs, right? And they're, they're vibrant colors. And I'm thinking that they're just capturing water. Because... Okay, an orb uh, has such a, a similar shape to if you have a, 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 a capturing a water particle or dust particles, and it can be confusing. We've we tend to back away from that stuff now because of the confusion. We don't share a lot of that stuff because I, I don't want to discredit the other stuff like the apparitions, the the uh the the shadow figures i don't want to discredit that by throwing in things that can be uh misunderstood because a lot of people swear up and down when they photograph a water particle that hey they've got an orb <laughs> so yeah yeah you know yeah what? orbs i mean 90 at least 90 percent of orbs are explainable you mean water, as you say water particle uh, dust um insects I mean, the most common one I come across when people send me videos is, oh, look, I was sitting in my bedroom and look at all these orbs floating around the room. And unfortunately, the worst thing for creating orbs is cotton dust. And if you're in your bedroom, there's going to be a lot of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we did a house and it, it, was a, it was an extremely evil location. We did this house. But the problem that we was having with our, with our videos was it had a lot of insects in it. It had a lot of dust in it, so when you would catch something, I was glad that the stuff we were catching was not staying in the same form as a water particle or, or a dust. It was kind of elongating itself, and you could differentiate, but sometimes you can't, and that becomes very frustrating. Like, you know, it's and, and we've made a lot of those mistakes when we first started. When we first started... Uh, you know, we were thinking the same thing everybody else is thinking. Oh, you know, look at all these orbs. <laughs> but then you do the you do you do the research and you realize these are water particles, dust particles, and insects. And you have to real orbs are real. They do exist, but it's very very difficult to 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 narrow it down and get the orb. And and you have to prove that it's not one of the other things, dust, water, or insect. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Orbs can be uh, very misleading, but uh, what I tend to look for, I try to ignore orbs as much as possible. I look for light anomalies, and it's usually self-illuminating, which you will see with your own eyes. Um, we've had many of those, and it, it, and it takes it away from the, uh, the, the chance that it's something else, because if something's self-illuminating, it's not dust, because dust doesn't carry uh, a light bulb, so yeah unless it's unless it's uh unless you're in a high hum, human place and then that's what we find is that if people that are claiming they're seeing red orbs and orange orbs 
are actually they're catching water they're seeing water particles that's reflecting uh yeah. light. and so uh you know they don't understand that and they'll argue it with you to to the end of time but you know that's that's my interpretation of what a lot of people are claiming that oh you know i've seen this this and this and i always say verify it with three different uh, uh verification processes because if you have spiritual activity you're going to have more than just the visual uh you should get some yeah. kind of emf reading or something right yeah yeah definitely i mean the, the only exception that with orbs that i tend to take that is, is if they appear on command then you've got something because you've actually asked for it and then suddenly there is one you know, yeah that way it's, it's eliminating the fact that okay well an insect's not gonna jump to your command and even a bit of dust or water so um, you know if something like that happens you've got more of a backup to it yeah and we had that happen in, a, in the biker bar that we did um, where they, they were appearing on command and they actually at one point uh, had faces that were morphing they were morphing faces which was weird but um <laughs> And before we go to Ian, I had one last question. I always like to ask people: Do you do you think uh, phenomenons like Harry Potter and all these things that are on film, books, uh, TV series, do you think that's really soften the blow for the the masses to be more accepting of the supernatural, paranormal world? Yeah, I think so. I think anything like that does address it in a, in a in a light sense of the way so it makes it less scary um which is not a bad thing because the less you're scared of phenomena uh the less harm it's going to do you um you know myself for instance i'm not you know you put me in a haunted building and someone tells me there's a demonic entity in a particular room i'm the first one in there you know i've got no fear of that because my intention is positive so it's uh, it does make the paranormal world a, a little bit lighter and right. it makes it more acceptable right now, 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 now i notice going back to the ouija board thing real quick uh can you uh, i know we're, we were talking and trying to give people instructions on how to use one properly closing it out while, while putting it at the goodbye but also there's a cleansing process i know what we use uh, we use sage, and there's different types of sage. Uh, what do you use particularly? Yeah, white sage is exactly what I use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what we got. We got. To we use it after cleansing it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the way to do it. But for some reason, this board that y'all sent us from nine of the most evil places <laughs> in your area, seems you know, we all don't have enough sage. I need a dump truck full of sage. It seems yeah. to be uh, white yeah. sage repellent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, perhaps you need a lorry load. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, 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 uh, when we meet up in person. it's just the last year. Go ahead. I said perhaps it's just the, uh, the last year has added the uh, negative element to it. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. There's been a lot of deaths, man, a lot of deaths. And, uh, um. What, 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 well, Ian, we, we really appreciate your help, man, and uh, we look forward to meeting you one day in person and uh, really doing an investigation together. That would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, brilliant. Well, we'll, we'll either see you in the UK or, or y'all be over here, one or the other. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hook it up at some point. <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got more ghosts here. That's, yeah, that's true that's yeah. true yeah y'all older over there y'all y'all been more established a lot longer you know so yeah i'll introduce you to crowley oh, yeah. oh that would be awesome yeah we talked about that last time there's like crowley's bar or whatever over there right yeah yeah that's uh in the town center yeah there's plenty of places here he's associated with that'd yeah. be awesome yeah we, he, he will make an appearance at some point no doubt, <laughs> no, doubt. Yeah, we, <laughs> no doubt we'd love to come yeah. there man and do that for, with you for sure but uh man we appreciate you uh this show will, will probably be up uh at some point tonight uh or your time tomorrow when you, you, you to, tomorrow morning your time i guess yeah okay mate sounds good to me 
All right, man. Hey, Ann, thank you for joining the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, and uh, stay yeah. safe out there, Ian. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much. Yeah, you too. You uh, too. Uh, See you later. See you yeah, later. Take Bye. care. So that was Ian Vero of Residential Hauntings. Hastings, UK. And it's very important to understand that he is a professional paranormal researcher. And as being such, he has told you the same thing I've been telling people. Do not play with a Ouija board. And so... Uh, it's all about intent, too. Yeah. And it's interesting, folks, uh, for Timothy and I, uh, uh, paranormal research or uh, paranormal world is a lifestyle for us. And uh, our goal is to do research and to help people. Our goal is not to make money and become a paranormal superstar. We're here. That It's a lifestyle for us. And uh, it's not about the money. It's about helping people and true paranormal research.